Lurking in the numbers delivered today is the fact that we are in for a huge jump in positive cases. That's because there's an outbreak at Cummins Prison. While we wait for the tally of inmates to be included, THV 11's Rolly Hoyt asked what it could mean for the rest of us. It goes without saying that there's a difference between prison life and real life, but with a flare up of cases going on in Cummins prison right now, we wanted to know from public health officials what they could learn and how it might guide us get back to something like real life here on the outside. Note that uh, of the 142 new cases, 117 of those cases were in the prison system, which is Cummins. We've added new words to the lexicon of this pandemic, congregate settings, a fancy way of saying crowded places, living close together. A nursing home is one, so is a prison. The top part of it, the, what's in white, reflects what is in the congregate environment, which is the prison system. In eight days' time, at least 600 inmates at Cummins have tested positive, a real-life lab for our state's top doc when it comes to COVID-19. How rapidly COVID-19 can spread within a communal living setting. That has to be a factor as families clamor for summer camp in the months ahead. A lot of people can be infected and asymptomatic. We knew that from our nursing home outbreaks, uh, but we didn't know that the same would be true for a younger, um, generally healthier population. Reassuring as more and more healthy people emerge from our homes. But there's also a big difference between prison and our hometowns. The toughest place to control an outbreak, uh, but also the easiest. You can tell inmates where to go. Freedom to roam creates a puzzle when it comes to public health. So we know social distancing is sticking around. The governor for now is urging that in the face of hundreds of prison positives. It's something we watch very carefully. It's one factor among many as we make our decisions for the future. For THV 11, I'm Roly Hoyt.